I'll explain the bonnet situation in a minute, but if you take a look at this, this cable here is supposed to be bolted to this section right here. But when that cable's in the correct position, this is what happens. Pop the key into the ignition and nothing. We have absolutely nothing. We've got power, we've got the ignition lights and all the electrics work in the car, but we have no start. And this problem has been kind of confusing me because usually when a car has a crash and the airbags blow off, a pyrotechnic fuse blows, stopping power going to the engine. So it completely cuts it out, causing any more damage than what's already happened. Now I asked Mercedes to send me the pyrotechnic fuse for this car and what they sent me is this. This is just the actual cable for it. I changed the cable and we still have the problem. It seems power is going here, but it's stopping the power going across here and into the starter motor cable, preventing the car from being started. So something inside this box is stopping it, not the actual cable. So we're gonna to have to solve that issue today, along with a bunch of others. This part of the headlight is popped out, it's completely out of line, and for some reason, the indicator's decided not to work anymore. We've still gotta perfect the fitment of the Black Series kit as best we can with a little bit of body filler. I've still got no exhaust tips, scratches and dents to sort out, there's no bonnet, and we still need to secure this front bumper. So let's move this cable back across so we can jump the circuit, and we should be about ready. Let's address the no bonnet situation. Now, if you remember rightly, I bought a second hand bonnet for a thousand pounds. And this was just a stock bonnet. And it just wasn't cutting it with the Black Series kit. So I've actually managed to swap the stock bonnet with one of you guys to an aftermarket Black Series style bonnet. Now it is fiberglass and the fitting isn't too great. So I've had to make a few adjustments, as you can see here, and drill some fixings in for the front grille. But I think it's going to be worth it. Check this out. Now that bonnet suits it a lot better, if I do say so myself. The paint job is questionable. It's completely flat. It's lost its shine. But this whole car is going to be painted anyway, so it's not too much of a worry. There is one thing, though, that I forgot to take off my old bonnet and put it on this bonnet and... Well, that are the parts where this strut connects to the bonnet to hold it up. So now, well, the bonnet doesn't hold itself up. But luckily the person I swapped the bonnet with, they are gonna send me that out because you can't buy those bits separately from Mercedes. Now I think we should sort out the headlight and that front bumper. Let's get to it. Now if you're eagle-eyed then you may notice the new steering wheel wrap that was on the steering wheel fitted by Auto Accessories UK. It's an Alcantara cover and it's just stitched over the standard steering wheel. Looks pretty mint in my opinion. But we're not gonna be touching the steering wheel today we need to get the front bumper off so we can assess these headlights. These headlights were super expensive and it's pretty disappointing that they're not working properly. This chrome clip here you can see has popped out so we need to split the headlights open to have a look at it. And whilst we're there we might as well paint the chrome on the inside black to stealth it out a little. To get to it we need to separate the lens from the actual backing of the headlight. To do this I've got to heat up the seal with my heat gun and use a screwdriver and being careful not to damage the headlight. And eventually the lens will split off the headlight. Now I can start removing all the chrome parts that we're going to be painting black. With the chrome parts off, I can rough them up a bit, give them a bit of a prime, and then paint them. This shouldn't really affect the way the headlight works or reflects the light, it just should give it a nice stealthy look. And with the chrome parts dry, I can start reassembling the headlight and already you can see how stealthy that headlight is looking. Before I re-glue the lens back onto the headlight, I thought it was a good idea just to check that it all still works before I reseal everything. And good news for me, it does. So now I'm gonna heat up the existing glue just to make it nice and soft and then add a layer of Tiger Seal around the edge before pushing back on the headlight lens. Okay, so before I put the lens back onto the actual headlight that I had the issue with, which is looking so much more aggressive now, all blacked out, I'm gonna plug it onto the car and just see if the lens actually moves the sort of trim off the headlight like it did before. And also try and figure out why the hell the indicator isn't working. 
Now, the reason we had the issue before, when you start the car, this little Xenon projector here actually moves left and right with this steering wheel to project the headlights in the direction that you go in. But what actually happened is the is Xenon moved all the way to this side here and popped out this bit of trim. And the only way to fix it is to take the lens off and I don't want to have to do that again. Okay, so the headlight is still doing it. It seems like it has a mind of its own. So now this part is really off center and it's actually scratched some of the paint which I've just painted on, which is really annoying. And I can't work out why it's doing that. I've only got two theories. Theory number one is that it's not communicating with the steering angle sensor. So it doesn't know where the steering wheel is straight and where it's meant to sort of rest in the straight line position. So what I'm gonna do first is get the computer and reset the steering angle sensor. Now building a car like this takes a lot of time of effort and it's definitely not done overnight. But I'm sure when this car's done, I'm gonna be so proud of it. And it's just gonna be a display of all my hard work and effort. Just like what a website does for your business, only with Squarespace who have sponsored this video, it doesn't take a lot of time or effort. Let me show you what could be a really expensive, stupid mistake that I did to the Lamborghini when I got home from Monaco. The car was aired out and I decided to try and drive it whilst it was aired out, completely forgetting and have absolutely crumpled this arch. Now, lucky for me, the wing is made out of aluminium, which makes it quite difficult to repair. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna set a challenge. I bet I can set up a website using Squarespace by the time Hannah calls Lamborghini to find out how much this damage is gonna cost me. Go. Okay, so this should be easy. I just bought Leicester. Getting started on Squarespace is super easy. There is loads of templates to choose from and you can use that as your base. All you've got to do is find one which best suits you. Good evening, Bentley and I'm Leicester. Really speaking, how can I help you? There's loads of different types of websites that you can create, including online stores, which is what we're trying to make now. Hiya, oh, yeah. is this parts? I can drag and drop my own photos in there, my own logos in there. And what's really cool as well, I can switch between mobile view and desktop view because all the websites are mobile friendly. Can I get him to give you a call back? And that should just roughly about do it. How are you getting on? I'm waiting for a call back. <laughs> so there we have it, point proven. Building a website with Squarespace is quicker than trying to find how much a front Lamborghini wing costs. So when you need a website, all you've got to do is click the link in the description box below and then use code Matt Armstrong when you're ready to launch and that's going to give you 10% off your first website or domain name. Thanks Squarespace, back to the video. Okay, retail's at £3,305 plus back. So after a brief heart attack, I was back onto the diagnostic tool and I wanted to calibrate the steering angle sensor, but it seems on this car, it's not possible. So I went back to square one and just ran a diagnostic on the C63 to see if any faults came up. Okay, we have got a lot of faults, which means a lot more fixes and <laughs> a lot more money. So one fault that I noticed almost straight away is the front left and the front right reversible emergency tensioning retractor, which would be the seatbelt tensioners. Now, we didn't actually replace these. We replaced the rear seatbelts. We replaced the curtain airbags and the full dashboard when all the airbags went, but I didn't replace the seatbelts on the front because, well, they're not locked out, so I thought they'd be okay, but it seems like we do have a fault in them, which is probably why the airbag light is still on so perhaps we still need to change those seat belts. I also had a few more faults with the airbag system come up. We need to take a look at the front passenger airbag, which we can do from underneath the glove box. We've got a fault for the pyrotechnics fuse, which we knew about, and it seems the two front crash sensors are faulty. And those crash sensors actually came with a crash bar that I bought. So perhaps they're not compatible with the C63. I also have a fault for an RPM sensor on the front left axle, which would be this little thing here. I can't see that being too expensive, but that'll be why we got an ABS light on the dash as well but the one fault which we might be having problems with the headlight is this one here the control module for the headlamp that could be the cause of the indicator being faulty and possibly the headlight being all wobbly now the only difference i can think now apart from the indicator not working is that we actually use the original ballast of the old headlight into this headlight here and that one seems to work okay and the xenon in the middle is pointing straight whereas on this one we've used aftermarket
market ones, which we've found on eBay, and it seems like that could be the fault, hence why the indicator's not working, and then probably causing some sort of confusion to that. So the only thing I wanna do now is switch over the balance from that one onto that one, and we'll see if that fixes the issue, and if that does, then we know what we need to do. Now, before I did that, I found an adjustment screw on the back. There's two of these, but this one is to adjust the headlight from left to right. So I was wondering whether it was just out of line. So I got an Allen key in there and tried to adjust it left and right, but it just didn't seem to do anything. But then I seem to have found the issue. It looks like part of the headlight inside has sort of unclipped itself. So I took apart the headlight from the front again. And you can see here, there's a little sort of knob which should sit inside that hoop there. And that looks like it's gonna be the issue with the wobbly headlight. So after a quick adjustment and popping it back inside where it should be, fingers crossed that should work. But we still haven't solved the indicator issue yet. With the headlight almost put back together, I just wanted to check whether that has fixed the wobbly headlight issue. And what do you know, it had. Just the indicator problem to solve next. On the C63, there's two ballasts. I assume one controls the headlight and one controls all the LED indicators and the daytime running lights. I switched over one ballast from the other side to the broken headlight, but it didn't seem to make a difference. So then I switched over the big ballast on the bottom from the passenger side headlight onto the driver side headlight and gave that a try. Yes. Well, no, but... <laughs> Okay, so we've got a faulty ballast, but at least we know which one it is. So let's get that ordered. Let's put this back together and let's move on to the next thing. And would you believe it, when I put them both back together, they both work. So maybe it was just a loose connection after all. So now both headlights work and all the internals are black. I can finally actually fix them up to the car and hopefully I never have to touch them again. When putting the bumper back on, I added a few more fixings on the top, which should secure it a little bit better. And then it's just the case of bolting the bumper to the wings. And there we go. Look how much better those headlights are looking now. They not only work now, they look so much better. Oh my days, that subtle mod to the inside of the headlight has made it look absolutely evil, combined with the new bonnet as well. The C63 is looking evil. It is fully stealthed out inside that headlight right now. And I, I, I'm still, do we paint it satin black or do we go for a different color? I just think it looks menacing right now. I have managed to secure the bumper a little bit better as well. It's now brought it to the aftermarket arch here. We have a fixing point here as well. So that is completely solid. The same on this side and of course the arch on that side. And I think once this part is sort of mounted to the under tray, it should be completely solid. There's grills to put in here and there's also a lot of fitment issues which we need to sort out eventually. But before we carry on with the cosmetic stuff, we need to move back to the mechanical stuff. We need to work out why this pyrotechnics fuse thing doesn't work. I think we need to get this box out and take a look at what's inside it. Before we start removing that sort of terminal box, I want to disconnect the battery just to save any nasty shocks. And then I can start attacking the terminal box or whatever it's called. This has loads of connectors going to it and is really fiddly to get to. So I'm hoping I do find a reason why the car won't start once I've got this out, else I've done it for no reason. I managed to get the box out and then it's just a case of splitting it open just to see what's inside of it. Okay, if I said I knew what I was looking at now, I'd be lying. So when buying a crash damaged car, if the airbags blow, more than likely the pyrotechnics fuse blow, cutting the power to the engine. And that's exactly what's happened here. Now I think Mercedes actually want you to buy this full box. And well, with AMG tax, I can't imagine that this is gonna be cheap. So if we can sort of solve this by replacing one of these uh, fuses, then well, that'd be great. So this is the part that we aren't getting power to and it's quite clearly, I think, something in there. But all these fuses here, I have checked them and we are getting readings going through those fuses whereas this bit here 
absolutely nothing. So I don't know whether we can actually buy this part separate. I'm going to unbolt that and then we'll have a look. Okay, we've found it. I really hope this all goes back together, but this is the pyrotechnics fuse. And good news is that it seems on this side here to have an actual Mercedes part number. So we may be able to, well, we should be able to order this, but what it looks like it does inside here, you can see there's two connectors. Now it looks as if those two used to join at some point and then when the airbag's blown, well, it blows off and you can sort of see the damage when it sort of blows off stopping the gap now if i was super sketchy i could just bridge the gap and put it all back together and i'm sure it'll work but if it overheats it may cause a fire so what i am going to do is give this part number a little google and see if we can order it and ebay comes through 45 pound three day delivery exactly what we need that is going straight in my basket so now we have a C63 which won't start, a bonnet which won't hold itself open, and a Lamborghini with a battered wing. But there's more than enough jobs that we need to be cracking on with on the C63, one of them including these exhaust tips. Now as a lot of you would have seen, this body kit did not come with exhaust tips, and I had to actually chop the old exhaust tips off, and then we're left with, well, just essentially a hole. Now actual genuine Black Series square exhaust tips are a fortune. You're looking at around six to 700 pound, and AMG do loads of different styles of square exhaust tips. You've got square exhaust tips on the A45, you've got square exhaust tips on the new C63, square exhaust tips on Mercedes SLs even. And quite frankly, I don't know the difference between any of them, but this set is of a C63 205. I bought this, it was only about 100 quid, and it actually came with the diffuser, which we're not gonna use, but the backing plates, which actually hold the exhaust tips on, which I know we're gonna need because that came with absolutely nothing. The question is though, will these exhaust tips fit the gap of the C63 Black Series bumper? You know what? Now looking at it, I'm not sure this is gonna work. Well, it's not gonna go in that way, so it looks like we've gotta take the bumper off, but I don't know how we're gonna mount this thing. So the bumper's gotta come off, and here's me praying that these exhaust tips are gonna work, and if they're not gonna work, I'm gonna try and make them work. With the bumper off, I lined them up to the rear and I just couldn't work out how the hell I was going to mount these exhaust tips either to the bumper or to the car. But it seems the exhaust tips fit with a few adjustments needed. So I had a brief second for myself and then got to it. I had to do some more cutting of the original exhaust just to make room for the new exhaust tips. But I'm pretty confident the original back boxes will be replaced at a later date anyway. And then my sort of theory was to mount the exhaust tip mount to the crash bar. It actually bolted to part of the chassis and then I just used a zip tie just to temporarily hold it there just to see if this would work and if it's in the right place. And after lining the bumper up, I'm pretty sure I can make this work. So with a bit of fabrication, I've got to make the hole for the exhaust tips a little bit bigger because it was a tight fit. And then it's just a case of trial and error. And once I was happy with the fitment, I found a way to permanently mount the exhaust tip holder to the crash bar. Permanently mount meaning a few self tappers, but it does the job. Okay, that's one side on, I think, I've got it as best as I can get it. The AMG logo is showing there. It's pretty symmetrical and the butchered exhaust tips are pretty much pointing out there, but we are going to have to maybe make like a custom exhaust just so it does flow directly out and doesn't melt the bumper. But that is pretty much the best I can get it and it's pretty solid as well. Can't see that moving anywhere. Now we've got to move on to this side, which is going to be harder because we've got this as a reference point now. So we've got to get that side exactly the same as that side. Here we go. It's a good job I had on those super protective Prada glasses, which are found in the back of the Audi S3. But here we go, I've just got to try and replicate what I did on the driver's side to the passenger side, which I'm pretty confident that I could do. Again, I went for the old zip tie trick just to line it up. And once I was happy where it was placed, I could then permanently mount it to the crash bar. And I think that just about does the job.
okay, so it looks a little messy, as do I, but the point is they're on and they're secured on as well. There's a little neatening up here and there that we need to do, as there is pretty much on the whole car. But look at those babies, AMG logo on the top, just poking out, I think I've got them just about right each side, and that is looking how it should. It is slowly coming together now. Let me know, what do you think about the chrome? Should they have gone with black tips, but... I don't know, I think the chrome pops nicely. Now, it'd be awesome to start this thing up and get the V8 raw coming through the new exhaust tips, but, um, well, we can't start it up until we've got that pyrotechnics fuse. But sometimes to move forward, you have to move a few steps back first, but we have got the headlights working and they're looking evil, all blacked out now. The bumper is nice and secure now, and the exhaust tips are on. Still plenty more to do and a lot to crack on with, but if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Oh my god. <laughs> How much? 3,300 plus fat? For a wing. <laughs> no, we should have just added it up. <laughs>